Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review two books on cows. The first book I would like to discuss is by an author I have grown very fond of over the years. That book is called Taking Stock, A Journey Among Cows by Roger Morgan Grenville. This book was published in 2022 by Icon Books. The hardcover comes in at 368 pages. However, I read an e-copy that I received from the publisher for free for reviewing purposes. The author says in the very early pages of this book, which I would consider to be a memoir, history, history, sociology, business, and food writing type of hybrid, that while he's not a farmer, he is extremely fond of cows. He talks at length about how many things they've been used for historically and then also in the modern day in terms of food, labor, and byproducts, but just how underappreciated cows are despite how much we owe them. So partially in service of telling their side of the story, as he says, but also also partially just because it seems like he wanted to, he took a part-time job on a friend's farm so that he could interact more with cows. He could learn from this farmer friend. He could be involved in the industry as he was gathering information for this book. So the sections in Taking Stock where he's describing those firsthand experiences definitely make up the memoir element that I mentioned earlier. But I would say overall, this book is dominated by conversations about cows and the human relationship with them over the centuries. He starts at the very beginning with the original species that we domesticated and then selectively bred based on which characteristics were most desirable to us, therefore creating the myriad species of cows that we recognize today. And that leads him into conversations about what cows have been historically used for and how much depends on them even today which then opens up even larger conversations about the industry, about food production and government subsidies, and then other things relating to cows, like mad cow disease and smallpox, about leather production, and even climate change. This author uses his own experiences on the farm and then when he went to a number of different cow-related events to lead him into those grander conversations in a way that felt very natural. But I should mention that even though this book does discuss a number of different countries, since cows can be found all over the world, this author is British. And therefore, this book is dominated by discussions about industries located within the UK. But some of the more ethical conversations he has within the book are universal. Morgan Grenville actually hands over a lot of space within this book to discussing both sides of the debate over meat eating and conditions to be found within factory farms. I personally was really impressed by how balanced of an approach he took to presenting both sides and all the nuances involved. Even when you could feel him start to arrive at a position, how he himself felt about everything through his experiences of gathering information for this book, getting closer to cows, you kind of can feel where he's coming from, but he never forces his opinion on the reader. I found taking stock to be extremely enlightening, even though it could be hard to read at times. For anyone who might be sensitive to this kind of thing, there is a description of a visit to a slaughterhouse in this book. It's far from gratuitous in either direction. Again, his approach is very level, but I just thought I would bring that up. I did like this book, but I can't say I enjoyed it quite as much as the other books of his that I've read previously. Thus far, I've read his book on beekeeping and his book on shearwaters, which is a type of seabird, in case you didn't know. And I think I enjoyed both of those more than taking stock because they both had a much stronger, much more present memoir element. Now, we do get elements of memoir in taking stock, but we don't get as much of his personality. And I personally think he has an amazing personality, and I really wanted more of that in this book. So I did like it. I learned a lot. I'm certainly going to remember a lot from it and take it with me into the future. But at the end of the day, I wish that the balance between the memoir element and all the other elements going on in this book had been as balanced as his arguments were. But where Taking Stock looks at cows on a much more macro level as a species and the human relationship with them over time, the next book I'm going to discuss looks at cows on a much more micro, much more personal level. 
That book is called The Farmer's Son, Calving Season on a Family Farm by John Connell. This book was published in 2019 by Echo Books. And the hardcover copy that I checked out from my local library comes in at 256 pages. And if I wanted more of a memoir element in taking stock... I sure got it in this book, because this is primarily the author's story of coming home to his family's farm in Ireland after years spent living abroad. And within this book, he's helping his father out on the farm, he's taking charge of more things, and he's generally focused on getting his feet back under him after some very hard years. But even though the story that's being told in this book is technically the author's, and even though he does discuss some other animals in it as well, mainly sheep, the cow also gets a starring role. In fact, the original title of this book, the title under which it was published in Ireland, is The Cow Book. I mean, the entire book starts off with the author delivering his very first calf. And if you're like me, if you end up reading both of these books, but you begin with taking stock, then you'll know that Roger Morgan Grenville hints that things can go wrong when a cow is giving birth. But this book makes clear just how many things can go wrong. As I said before, Roger Morgan Grenville isn't a farmer. He temporarily worked on a farm, and while I think he did gain a basic understanding of cows and what it's like to raise them, at least enough to talk about it with some authority in his book, John Connell, the author of this book, is a farmer, or at least he's trying his very hardest to someday be worthy of taking over his family's farm. And that means that there is just something so much more personal about this memoir. I mean, not only does it give firsthand accounts of things that are discussed only conceptually in the previous book, but also the emotional connection between a farmer and his stock is made so apparent when you read this book. Throughout this book, he describes the workings of this farm, delivering calves and lambs and trying to help them survive, making big decisions, life and death decisions about his livestock, and then having to endure inevitable losses that hit extremely hard, not just financially, but also emotionally. And then there's just the day-to-day decisions, trying to look out for the health of the farm as a whole and also specific animals. To be a farmer is to be a student forever, the author says at one point, and you can really feel that as you're reading this book. And it's funny because taking stock by Roger Morgan Grenville, there were a number of farmers sharing their own experiences throughout that book, and they implied the exact same thing. Being a farmer is the kind of job where you have to learn by doing, by making huge mistakes and then learning from them, facing new challenges head on, embracing new technology where you can. The brutal yet rewarding nature of this work definitely sings through in this memoir. John Connell at points throughout this book does dip a toe into the water of trying to tell the grander history of the cow, but I did find that a lot of things that he covers are discussed much more at length in the previous book, Taking Stock, so that's not exactly what I would come to this book for necessarily, but something that is a focus of this memoir is the author's relationship with his father, which is, I'm assuming, why the U.S. publisher decided to change this title to The Farmer's Son. The two of them often fight throughout this book. So if that's something you are interested in or not interested in, that may inform whether or not you want to pick this up. It feels like sometimes they would get into tiffs because of the pressure of the work. Again, it is very stressful, but also it seems like they share a somewhat stormy disposition. It's not until we are nearly finished with this memoir that the author reveals the circumstances under which he returned to his family farm and why he felt the pull to stay. And I think that's a really interesting choice for a memoir. At first, I wasn't sure how I felt about it because it almost seems like he should have led with that information. That should be what we're talking about at the start of the memoir. But the more I think about it, the more I actually like it, the more I think it makes sense because I think it kind of mirrors the experience of being a farmer. The work always comes first. As I've been hinting throughout this video, there is a lot of crossover between these two books. So I found personally that they made a really good pair. I enjoyed reading them both very closely together in time. I found that they were good in conversation with one another. But if you're looking to pick one of these books rather than both of them, 
I can't rely on quality because I think they're of similar quality. I rated both of these books three stars. So I think it's going to come down to what you're looking to get out of the book that you pick up. I think if you want a book that discusses cows in a larger sense and how we treat them, then taking stock might be for you. But if you want something more quaint, more personal, then I think The Farmer's Son is the better choice. But those were my thoughts on these two books on cows. If you want to read or have read either or both of these books and want to share your thoughts, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. In the description box below, I've included links to everywhere you can get your hands on a copy of either or both if you're interested. And also down in that same description box, I've included something that I like to call the further reading section, where I've listed out some book titles that you might want to check out if this topic interests you. And at the very bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads, The Story Graph, Instagram, all the places I'm the most active across social media, in case you would like to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.